And there we go. At this moment, we have a Mini 500, a Mini 750 and the boot drives. Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today we are going to take a look on how easy it is to have Casa OS on Proxmox, but still being able to add storage via USB or even internal storage to our Proxmox machine and use it on Casa OS. Now, chances are if you have installed Casa OS on a container that you have some limitations but today we are going to check out here with this proxmox server how easy it is so that being said let's go straight for it and if you are watching this video on your windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official oim keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper and besides windows 11 pro if you are looking for windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our microsoft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below okay so here we are on my proxmox server this one is completely clean i have other here for testings and whatnot this one is using the i3 and 300 on the minix z300 we have reviewed here on the channel link will be down below it also has a two terabyte servant ssd inside which we are using you can check out the hardware right over here now the objective of this particular video is simple we have proxmox we want casa os but we also want the freedom to pass through hardware such as hard drives and usb drives and whatnot so that's exactly what we are going to to do now instead of installing through proxmox helper scripts or creating a container we are going to create a virtual machine and for that we are going to download ubuntu server which i already did download so that we can speed this video and we are also going to casa os website we can copy this right over here but i prefer to go to github especially for those that are here for the first time if we go to github we can check out everything right over here one of the things that i usually use is also debian 12 so this is our option and we are going to use ubuntu server today you can also use raspberry pi os but basically will be more or less the same depending if we want to have more things on that virtual machine but i will leave that one just for cas um, os so that being said let's go to our proxmox server i did already download ubuntu server which is here on my desktop as we can see and on proxmox what i will want to do first is to upload my ubuntu server iso so let's go here to local pve and if you haven't selected iso images you can select and then just upload you can also download from a url but probably this is easier just upload it right over here select the file which in my particular case it's on my desktop and then just press upload it will take a few moments okay there we go we have uploaded ubuntu server to our proxmox server and now we can start so first of all let's go here and create a virtual machine and on virtual machine let's select and call it casa os but you can call it whatever you want um, vm id we can leave it 100 and then press next uh, the image we want to use the image that we just uploaded so let's select ubuntu and there we go press next we don't need to change anything else here no changes here we can let's put in 200 gigabytes because i've got a two terabyte ssd right over here so we are not limited by storage so let's move with that cpu we can put in two cores for this machine will be more than enough but depend on uh, how you will be using it but you can change this later on i'm going to leave two gigabytes network as it is and then confirm and starts after created okay let's press finish and if we go right over here it's already uh, it's starting so if we go to our console we can check out and press try or install ubuntu server Okay, and we will be on this menu right over here. I'm going to select English, English as my language, and I'm going to continue without updating because we can update later on. So let's press continue. Layout of my keyboard is Portuguese, so I'm going to select Portuguese and press done. Right over here, let's leave as it is, Ubuntu server. Okay, here I will 
change nothing so I just leave it as it is proxy address the same once it finishes the tests we just press done here use entire disk which is 200 gigabytes okay so we are going to leave as 200 gigabytes and press done and right over here it's going to show us a few info now I, I need to dig a little bit deeper on Ubuntu server it's going to give us 99 gigabytes which we will see on Casa OS but I'm sure that we can then change uh, the size so let's press done and for now are you sure you want to continue yes I, I will format the drive because this is a virtual drive there is no issues whatsoever right now i need to put my data and once i put in everything just press done and right over here uh, i'm going to skip it for now because we just need the ubuntu server we don't need the pro version now this is important we want to install the open ssh server so let's select that with the space key or enter and then select done and that is it i'm not going to install any services because we are not going to need and if we need we can install later on so press done and it's going to install okay installation complete it took about a couple of minutes more or less the hardest part is done so now it's just the easy part we're going to press reboot now but we are going to get a error so we will need to shut it down anyway uh, we will see right over here that it will say that yeah okay so let's go to stop okay overrule okay so let's stop the machine let's go to hardware and one of the differences that you will see between a container and a virtual machine is that we will have a lot more options here so where it says dvd we are going to edit and we are going to select uh, select sorry do not use any medium so let's press okay we have no dvd or cd-rom inserted at this moment on our virtual machine and right now let's press i can go to the console so that we can see and i press start so that the machine starts up and there we go we have successfully installed Ubuntu on our uh, virtual machine so now let's put in here my username and okay it will give me here information that we will need and it will give you as well so we will need this IP address right over here what we are going to do next we could do it here on the console but i prefer to do it over ssh on any of the computers that we have on our network i'm going to use this one where i'm recording the screen and for that i'm going to use terminal if you have mac os or linux or even windows like i'm using right now you will be just fine so we just need to go here and select terminal and let's go and select terminal we will need this info here so what we are going to do is ssh and then i'm going to select my username i'm going to write my username which is Berto george at and now the ip address of my machine so it's 192.168.2 215 so this is the ip that we will get from our machine and we will write it right over here so now i'm going to press enter it will ask me if i'm sure yeah this is my machine so no worries whatsoever i'm going to press yes and bam after i write my password now it's bam so i'm basically on a ssh access which is the same that we have here but in here it's much easier least in my opinion so you have the two options just decide which one it's easier for you now we just need one last step so do you remember casa os i can copy this right over here but let's go to github which the link is right over here and then scroll down and we will get this uh, command right over here i just need to go to my terminal and i need to paste it right over here and press enter and it's going to install casa os i'm going to put it right over here on our server after i put in my password which is right over here so let's press and it will do the installation if we go to the summary of the machine we will see that the tasks are pushing up the machine which is good everything it's being installed it will take a couple of minutes 
And there we go. We have Casa OS installed on our virtual machine running Ubuntu server. Now it says that our Casa OS installation is exactly on the same IP of our Ubuntu server. So I just need copy and paste on my browser and there we go. But this is a different Casa OS from the Casa OS that you installed on a container. So let's put in our credentials and we are good to go. So let's accept this. And one of the differences that we can see is that it's completely updated because it fetched from Casa OS servers right over here. When we install through a container, we will need to update it. But at this moment, currently updated. So let's take a look at what matters, which is storage. At this moment, we only have the boot drive, which is a 200 gigabyte hard drive, virtual hard drive that we did create it. So it's all good but we want more. So I want to have access to more storage right over here. And for that, we are going to do it right now. So at this moment, we have a lot of freedom here on Proxmox to pass to Casa OS. And what I'm going to do is go here and stop and overrule and yes. Okay, so let's stop our machine. I'm going to grab one of these hard drives. This is a mechanical um, hard drive, 2.5 inches. 500 gigs right over here on this one. I'm going to connect to the Minix Z300 over USB and it will detect. So at this moment, let's go to PVE and where it says disks, we will find right over here the just connected 500 gigabytes WD storage 2.5 inches. And we are going to leave it as it is because at this moment, I want to pass through this hard drive as a USB device to our Casa OS. So let's go to Casa OS virtual machine and let's go to hardware. And right over here, one of the differences that you can see is that you can add everything that you want, unlike a container that we are more limited. It's not impossible, but we are a much more limited and this way it's a lot easier. So let's go to USB device and use port number. So I'm going to pass through the device which is Western Digital right over here. And I just need to press add. That is it. Easy as this. So right now, let's go to our machine. I don't need to go to the summary. I just like to be in summary so that I can see the machine booting up and using the resources. But I could left it as it was. Now, if I go to CAS OS and refresh, it will ask me for my credentials and let's log in. So there is one difference that we can see right now is that we have a uh, external storage connected via USB, which is cool. So if we go to storage manager, we can see mini 500, which is the name that I given to the drive because it's 500 gigabytes. And there we go. We can use it. We can format it. We can do whatever we want with the drive. Actually, if I press, yeah, if I press format, it will not leave. Uh, it will not let me change the name only the first time. So this is one of the limitations that I would like to see implemented in CAS OS, but it doesn't matter for today. So at this moment, if I go to files, I have my boot drive and I also have the mini 500, which I can eject. This is one of the main differences between internal hard drives and external, but we will connect an internal as well. So if I wanted to upload something, I could come right over here, upload file, and let's select, this one is too big, but let's go to downloads and okay. And there we go, just uploaded Rufus right over here. And if I want to delete it, I can delete, I'm sure. Okay, so basically this is it. We can use a USB hard drive, but now let's make it a little bit more fun. So I'm going to stop this machine once again. Let's press stop, overrule, yes, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another USB drive. This one has 750 gigabytes. <laughs> these are just on my draw and I use for these tests. What we are going to do right now is we are going to connect it via USB, but we are going to make it see as an internal hard drive. And it's actually quite easy and fun to do. So I'm going to connect it right over here to the Minix Z300. It's now connected. Let's go to our PVE where it says disks, it's already recognized. It is an external USB 3.0 drive, 750 gigabytes. So we could pass that one the same way that we did, but that's, that's not fun. So let's do something here. Let's wipe the disk and 
I'm sure to wipe everything. Yes, I don't have anything that I need. So let's wipe the disk. Okay, just takes a couple of seconds. And right now let's go to directories and we could also do a ZFS pool if we wanted, but let's go with directly this time. But you will have a lot of freedom and this is the best way that I see to install Castle OS on Proxmox because of these advantages. Now, the disk that I want to use, it's the only one available, which is this one right over here that we just placed in with 750 gigabytes file system let's select x4 name i'm going to select or i'm going to press mini 750 so the other one is mini 500 this one is mini 750 and let's press create and it's done it has added the mini 750 we can also see it right over here so what we need to do right now is go to casa os virtual machine on hardware instead of adding a usb device let's add a proper hard drive so right over here i can select uh, the storage units. I want to select the mini 750, which is 699 available. So let's do 699 and let's press add. And there we go. We also have an internal hard drive right now on Casa OS. So let's start our Casa OS server and let's go to summary just to see the machine booting up. It's really quickly. As soon as we see the green arrow here, it means that it's running. There we go. So let's refresh here. And if we go to storage manager, actually, before we go, we can see right over here, hard disk 699, which was the one that uh, we just inserted. But if we go to files, I still can't use it. So we will need to go to storage manager. And if we go to drives, we can see that we have the 200. We also have the 699. The USB doesn't appear here. So if I go to create storage, I need to give it a name. So let's Let's select mini seven uh, here. I think I can use space. No, I can't. 750. Okay. The hard drive is this one format and create. And there we go. At this moment, we have a mini 500, a mini 750 and the boot drive. So although these are external hard drives, one is seen as an external hard drive while the other one is seen as an internal hard drive. It doesn't appear here yet. We will need to reboot. So let's press here. Restart. Are you sure? Yes. We will need to log in again. And right now, if we take a look, we will have the three hard drives available here, one for boot and the two that we did add. One is seen as a external hard drive connected via USB and the other one is seen as an internal hard drive with 750 gigs, but we could change all that. So at this moment, we have a full-fledged Casa OS on Proxmox with all the storage that we want and we can just connect to our device and pass through to Casa OS. Now, that being said, hopefully this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.